I'll say that again. The devil is our problem only to the degree to which we are ignorant. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. He says, least Satan should take an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The reason why Satan can't take advantage of us is because we are not ignorant. So Satan takes advantage of us to the degree to which we are ignorant. When we are ignorant, Satan takes advantage of ignorance. Many of the things we bind, many, many of the things for which we bind the devil will easily be bound with knowledge would easily be bound with knowledge. Easily be bound with... Many of the things we accuse the devil of are not the devil at all. No Satan's problem at all. I remember the person who said he had a dream and he saw the devil crying under a tree. Crying profusely under a tree. <laughs> he was shocked because he thought the devil was so busy causing people problems. But this time it was Satan himself that was crying. And he asked the devil, what's the problem with you? He said, my problem are those Christians. My problems are those Christians. It is true that I'm bad and I cause a lot of problems. But these Christians are maligning me. There are many things they accuse me of that I don't do at all. That was why he was crying. Who will deliver me from these people? <laughs> he says, it's the devil. We rebuke the devil. Let her take slide. You bind the devil. All we need to do is to know how to generate electricity in our country and take advantage of all the resources God has given us and leave the devil alone. Is there no devil in New York? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, the, you, <laughs> knowledge will automatically bind for us. Bind the devil for us. Many of the, so he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, not because of the devil. Satan only takes advantage of ignorance. And once we are not ignorant, say Satan can't take an advantage of us, lest Satan should take an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. John 8, 32. We shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Shall set you free. Period. You experience freedom to the degree of the truth that is available to you. You shall know the truth. Truth will automatically set you free. Set you free from poverty and financial lack. Set you free from sickness. Set you free from, from every form of problem that you can imagine. Set you free from, from fear. You shall know the truth. Truth will set you free. You shall know the truth. Truth will remove the barrier from over your life. You see, you see, you rise only to the degree or level of your knowledge. A man cannot rise beyond the level of his knowledge. You develop capacity for positive results to the degree to which you have knowledge. You know how to do it. To the degree to which you know how to do it. Psalm 82 and verse 5. Once you solve the problem of ignorance, you have solved the major problem in this life. Psalm 82 and verse 5. It says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. He says, but ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. He says, all the foundations of the earth are now out of course. Knowledge is the foundation for your success. Knowledge is the foundation for your success. Knowledge creates capacity in you to succeed. He says, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. He says, I have said, you are God. 
All of you are sons of the most high, but you are dying like ordinary men. Just because you don't know how to go about life. You don't know what God are supposed to know. Because knowledge makes a God out of you. Knowledge gives you information. Knowledge gives you dominion. Knowledge gives you dominion. In John chapter 10, verse 35, he says, And if he calls them gods, that was Jesus talking, if he calls them gods, unto whom the word of the Lord came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. He calls them gods, unto whom the word of the Lord came. He calls them gods unto whom knowledge came, unto whom information came from God, unto whom revelation came. So you see, God's word and information generally gives you a handle on every situation. Gives you a handle, gives you dominion. He says, but you will die like men and fall like one of the princes. Psalm 49 and verse 20 says, man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast of the field that perish. What makes us superior to animals is our capacity for information. That's what makes a difference. Our minds, our spirits, our capacity to retain, to grasp information is what makes us different from animals. It says, but there are many human beings who are dying like animals because they know not, neither will they understand. They are falling like ordinary men when they were destined to be God on this earth. In Luke 23 and verse 34, Jesus hanging on the cross said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. The reason mistakes is because they don't know. You see, you make mistakes to the degree of your ignorance. You make your probability for failure increases with the increase in ignorance. Your probability for success, therefore, also increases with the increase in your knowledge. It does. Forgive them why they know not what they are doing. If a man is beating his wife, Lord, forgive him. Why? He's an ignorant man, period. Because if you read the Bible very well, you will have seen there are no man yet hated his own flesh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and the two of them shall be what? One flesh. So a man who is beating his wife is beating himself. And if you see a man on the street who is punching himself, knocking himself on the head, what will you do? Bundle the man and take him to our hospital. He needs some treatment. By my understanding of the word, a man who beats his wife is a crazy Since I'm not crazy, I'm not going to beat my wife. Moreover, I read in the Bible, two are better than one. Two are better than one. I was not a boxer when I was single. <laughs> so if I now turn into a boxer, into an Evander Holyfield, after I got married, where, how is it better? How has it become better? Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10. If the iron be blunt, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Ignorance leads to a waste of resources. A waste of effort and a waste of time. When you don't know how to do it, it takes you more time to do it than the man who knows how to do it. Ignorance saves you time, and time is life, and time is money. Knowledge saves you time. Saves you money. Save, in fact, saves your life. Saves your life. So, Ecclesiastes 10, 15 says also, The labor of the foolish weary yet every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. He does not have the know-how. Because he does not have the technical know-how, his labor is wearying him. There are people today who are accusing witches and wizards and uh, their grandmothers in the village or the rival of their grandmother in the village. It is not the rival of any grandmother anywhere. It is their ignorance that is killing them on the job. As long as we can find someone who can do the job better, why will we waste time with the person who doesn't know how to do it? I've had to change mechanics over and over and over again in this city until I met one and stayed with him because he gets the solution. Why should I waste my time with someone who does not know the job and who will just be guessing and, and who will have more problems? I took my car, took my, I was to travel one day, took my car for repairs to a mechanic. By the time we were leaving the place, smoke was coming out of my engine. The engine was going to burn off. Quickly reversed and took my car. Look, if you can't repair it, just return it into the state it was when I was bringing it here. Uh, <laughs> I didn't bring my car to the mechanic workshop to be burned. <laughs> hmm. 
If the iron be blunt, you need to exert more strength, more muscle power. He said, but wisdom is profitable to direct, and wisdom is knowledge accurately applied. Now, that verse sim is simply telling us mind power is superior to muscle power. Mm. Mind power is superior to muscle power. So if the iron be blunt, then must he put to more strength? If only you had knowledge that they normally sharpen the edge of the cutlass, then you will know that the time taken to sharpen the edge of your cutlass is time invested. It's not time wasted. Because very soon when you sharpen the edge of your cutlass, you will overtake the man who is trying to cut with a blunt axe. You will overtake. Knowledge gives you speed. Knowledge gives you speed. Mind power is superior to muscle power. That's a major change in attitude that needs to come on our country and on our people. Too much labor. Too much labor, too much exertion with little results. Let's put a premium on knowledge. Let's put a high premium on, on information. Let's get informed. Let's put a high premium on education. Let's do so. Let's put a high premium on books. We don't have a reading culture. And it's pulling us back. The whole world has gone. The whole world has gone. The only way we can catch up is to catch up first of all in our minds before we can catch up on the ground. Somebody is talking about a uh, transfer of technology. Which country, in its right sense, will transfer the technology that is causing them to export to you and to collect your money? Then they will now transfer it. They are transferring technology, but they are transferring obsolete technology. That's what they are transferring. It is obsolete technology. They dismantle their refineries that they don't want again and, and paint everything and come to re, re, rearrange the whole thing here. Then they build a new one for themselves. No. It is not transfer of technology. We want, we want, first of all, a transfer of knowledge. We want to catch up in the level of knowledge. It is inevitable that on the ground we will catch up. We've got to put... It's so unfortunate. People who are handling our educational system today, only God knows what's wrong with them. Of course, in a country where, 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 where even the leadership don't appreciate information and knowledge, what a shame. We need to put the premium on knowledge. Put the premium on knowledge. We design the educational system. We make it so difficult for students to learn. Make it so difficult. We've been so used to struggling that we believe everybody must struggle to write. <laughs> Every generation is supposed to be an improvement on the previous one. Get the knowledge across as easy as possible and let them quickly improve on it. Not these school students are using computers elsewhere in the world. They can't allow our ones to use calculators. <laughs> if, if you will allow some people, we will still have been using slide rule in our university by now. Slide rule. Maybe some people here don't even know what slide rule is. <laughs> or four people table, thank you. <laughs> They're using computers elsewhere. Let's put the premium on knowledge. <laughs> in Luke 11:52, Jesus was accusing the lawyer. It was the lawyers of those days, so not our learned friends around now. He said, woe unto you lawyers. <laughs> God bless the lawyers in this time. Amen. <laughs> he, said, he said, for you hold the keys of knowledge. Ye will not enter in, neither will you allow other people to enter in. The key of what? Knowledge will open doors for you. Yeah. Today, there are many doors that Christians are banging on with prayer and fasting. And prayer and fasting never opens any door. It is keys that open them. In the name of Jesus. Now, I have a key in my hand to open a door and I'm binding the devil. Nonsense. What does the devil have to do with the door? You may get the door to open by a miracle, but it will take the sovereignty of God to do that. That's why our results have been limited to the sovereign act of God and not by solid principles that would accurately produce every single time. They are a key. Matthew 16, 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Bind means disallow or forbid. When you lay hold on the keys, whatever you disallow is disallowed. Whatever you allow is allowed. Let's get the keys. The key of knowledge. Bang on the door. 21 days fast. 
40 days fasting. Tongue, blast the devil, demolish, break down. And there is a key that will easily have opened the door. Life will become easy for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Proverbs 25 and verse 2, he says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the honor of kings to suck it out. Suck it out. Go for it. Suck it out. So like I say, your honor is waiting for your research. It is the honor of kings to suck out. Your recovery is waiting for your discovery. Your recovery is waiting for your discovery. Miracles are simply celebrations of discoveries. Testimonies, breakthroughs are simply testimonies or celebrations of discovery. Every measure of progress that a man or a woman makes in life is on the basis of a new discovery or addition of knowledge that they have made to their life. Period. Life becomes easier to the degree to which we have knowledge. It's so important and so crucial. So important and so crucial. In, in, in Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 14, it says, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, it says, then there shall be a reward. It is true, you have a dream, you have a goal, you have decided what you want. But as soon as you know how to get it, it says, then there shall be a reward. Your success is guaranteed. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. Thy expectation shall not be cut off. Daniel 11.32, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So, they that know their God shall be strong. Knowledge gives you strength and positions you for exploits. Positions you for exploits. I want us to run through the book of Proverbs. Just a few verses in the book of Proverbs. I want us to hear from Solomon. Solomon who had access to so much of heaven's wisdom. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 14. I'll just pick out some of those verses. Proverbs 10, 14. It says, Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Wise men do what? Lay up. In other words, you can never get enough. Until you know everything God knows, you don't know enough yet. Listen, all that, all that you know is all you have learned. All that you know is not all there is to know. Go for more. Reach for more. Reach for more. And more and more and more. Proverbs 11, verse 9. Verse 9. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyed his neighbor. But true knowledge shall the just be delivered. Your deliverance is waiting for addition in your knowledge. True knowledge shall the just be delivered. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 16. Proverbs 13 and verse 16. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge not that you'll be struggling about not that you'll be you see it says every prudent man dealeth with knowledge but a fool layeth open his folly <laughs> you see the wise man the prudent man does not attempt it until he knows what he's supposed to do about it so he doesn't want to waste his effort it is the foolish man who jumps out who tells everybody he's going to do it and he doesn't even know what he's supposed to do laying open his folly. But he says, the prudent man dealeth with knowledge. Dealeth. Dealeth with knowledge. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 7. Talking about your associations and how it affects the kind of knowledge that you get. Proverbs 14 verse 7. He says, go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. Listen, some people had to you. 
some take from you. Build relationships that add to you. Most of the sins that human beings commit and the habits they develop, they develop from the place of discussion with their peers. That's what we, we have what we call peer pressure. Many men who marry the second wife get the idea from the club when they are discussing and chatting with the boys. They ask, you, your wife is talking to you like that? Nonsense. I say, if, it was, if I was the one, how can a woman ever dare such a thing to me? As soon as she knows there is a second one, you will see, she will just simmer. You have started. So, go from the presence of a foolish man. When thou perceivest not in him the lips of not least, there are friends you have. Every single time you see yourselves, you share some new discoveries that you have made. Ah, those are the relationships I've maintained over the years. Every, I mean, since the time I was a student, there was a pastor friend of mine. Now, when we were students, our campuses were just near each other. There was a day we met ourselves on the road. In the sun, we were discussing for one hour. Fresh insights that we were getting from the Bible. One hour in the sun. Go from the presence of a foolish man. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. After, in, in, in having discovered that when you, when you move close to those who have gone ahead, they rub off on your life in the past few years, ah, I have appreciated in tremendous ways. One of the shocking things I've discovered in recent times is this. What the poor man thinks is the secret of the rich man is an assumption. He doesn't know anything. The bottom is so loaded and jammed with people. The top, only a few people are there. There is so much space. It's time for everybody to move up. But most of the people at the bottom are criticizing the people at the top. When they need to move closer and get to find out how they got to the top. They say, don't mind him. It was because of this that he did. That was what favored him. Nonsense. If it favors everybody like that, why has it not favored you? Now, if you think you know what he knew, if you know what they know, you will do what they do the way they do it, and you will get the same results that they are getting. So, association matters. He that worketh with wise men will be wise. He who works with rich men will be rich. Begin to work with rich men. Amen. Because you are rich. Hallelujah. Your circle of friends has changed. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 15. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge. And the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Finally, Proverbs 24 and verse 5. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is strength. So as you have information, fresh, relevant information, you had strength. You had your potential for breaking through obstacles, for accomplishing new things. Had potential. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Savior. Grace and peace be what? Be multiplied unto you. How? Through knowledge, the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Jesus. So, grace, sorry, knowledge is a multiplier of grace. As you multiply knowledge in your life, grace is being multiplied over your life. In other words, things become easier. Your achievements move on to a geometric progression when you switch on to the information frequency increase your level of knowledge. Knowledge increases your capacity for success, increases the level of God's grace on your life. Acts 20, 32, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. See what information is doing. Build you up, give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Let's go for knowledge. Let's develop a craving for knowledge. Finally, I'll read from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. Proverbs 2, verses 3 to 5. 
says, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her the way you have been running after money as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Knowledge is found. That's why I say you have to search. Knowledge is what found. And when thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And the expectation shall not be cut off. Now, I, I just want you to, to, to do this. Lay a foundation for your success this year and the rest of your life by developing a hunger, a thirst, and a passion for knowledge. Go for information. Go for knowledge. This year, like never before. This year, like, go for information. Look for it in the Bible. Look for it in books around. Technical books, general books, motivational books. Look for it everywhere. Look for it in Christian books. Look for it, for, uh, 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 look for it in books that have to do with your own peculiar career. Look for it. Look for the knowledge you need to enjoy grace and peace in your marital life by reading books of marriage. Read, 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 read. I'll encourage that. The pastor of the largest church in the world shared his testimony that he reads. Beside his bed, there is always a pile of books. It says, I'm growing old now. My eyes are growing dim, but I'm still reading. He said, my wife knows what I need. She goes out to the shop and gets a pile of books and comes and says, I bought some gifts for you and put them beside. And he begins to read and read. Before the thing ends, she buys another pile and puts them there. Because books have made him. Books have made him. I read the story of Ben Carson one of the best neurosurgeons in the world, and he's a believer, is in John Hopkins University in the United States. The young man said he was a failure. He was a failure in primary school. He, 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 in fact, he came behind the whole class all the time. But suddenly, his mother put down a law in the house. Their father had run away. Now, it, it was just his elder brother and himself. The mother put down a law in the house. You must go to the library every day go to the public library every day after school before you come home to play and then she said at the end of the book you will at the end of the week you summarize everything you read in the book inside a notebook for me to read by force and then he started going to the library to read he said he, he looked for an area of interest he started studying on stones then one day one day the teacher who normally would like to ask the students questions to know how much they know before he starts his lecture has the question that had to do with stones. He said instantly he knew the answer because he had read it at the library. And then he said he just waited so that everybody in the class will display their ignorance. You understand? <laughs> People were guessing here and guessing there, guessing here and guessing there. And then he said finally he raised his hand. And the teacher said, yes, Ben. And then he stood up and gave the answer. The man shouted, Ben is a brilliant student. He said the whole class, he told them to clap for him. That was rare information. He said his head swelled that day. Ah, he now took the library very serious. He, was, he said from that time, it was straight A's in every single subject until he finished school. Straight, a distinction student, best student in his class till he finished university and became at a very young age, in his early 30s, one of the best neurosurgeons in the world. One of the best. He carried out an operation on Siamese twins, the first of its kind in the world. Siamese twins are twins that are joined together in their bodies, and you have to use operation to cut them apart. They usually die. These ones, were, their brains were joined together. Their skulls and their brains were joined together. And this guy, this man, Ben Carson, led a team and they successfully separated the skulls and the brains and the twins survived. It made news internationally. There, there, there was a woman who had twins inside her womb. One of them had, what do they call these things? Let me avoid the medical jargon. But there was water inside the skull, the brain of one of the twins inside. His head was growing so big and was going to injure the other one. In the, this man carried out an operation, led a team of doctors, they carried out an operation, passed a tube into the woman's womb, passed the tube, drilled a hole through the skull, sucked the water out. And the baby survived inside the womb and went full time before they were delivered. Now, the library and books made the turnaround 
in the life of this young man. Information will make the difference in your life. Amen. Information will make you outstanding. Amen. It increases your capacity for success. Last year, I was reading a book written on the largest church in the world. Which other book do I want to read but on the largest church in the world? Eh? I want to look for the man who has the information. There are people, their churches are no more than 200. They organize church growth seminar. Who will go there? <laughs> what do you want to teach me? You want to teach me how my church will shrink to the size of your own? Now, <laughs> <laughs> so I was reading the book Growing the World's Largest Church and then I saw it I've been working on home fellowship systems now for, more, for almost 10 years and then I saw things that I had never seen before and then we applied those things to our home fellowship system and we are recording success like I have never seen before in the home fellowship system this year success power is being blessed more than ever before yeah. what happened? I read a book in December that's all the number of partners we have now, as of today, is more than the total number of partners we had throughout the whole of last year. Partners we raised in church, raised in seminars, raised everywhere and all of that. And this year, it's looking like we will have 10 times the number of partners we had last year. Why? I read a book. Let me confess. An angel did not appear to me. I read a book. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. God will open you up this year. You will have access to information like you never came across before. You will, your life will gather speed this year, you understand? You will succeed like you never succeeded before. Rise up to your feet with me, amen. Praise God. And give him thanks and praise. Our God is a God of knowledge. Our God is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. Our God is a God of knowledge. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I want you to do just one thing before I pray. If thou criest after knowledge, if thou seekest her as silver, I want you to lift your voice and just ask the Lord, Lord, knowledge this year. Let me encounter knowledge this year. Bring books across my way. Bring tapes across my way, audio and video. My Bible reading this year, let it be revolutionary. My Bible reading this year, let it be a revolution. Bring across my way information. How to rise through the corporate ladder and become the chief executive officer of my company. How to become outstanding in my area of business. 